Hey it's Irish and today I'm going to be doing a Meet the Artist plus Q&A video to start off the new year. First off, happy 2024 to everyone, I hope the year is going great for you guys, and the Q&A will be split into three sections, YouTube, art, and personal questions. Timestamps will be in the description, and I'm sorry if I didn't get to answer everyone's questions, but thank you to everyone who asked, and let's get started. So starting off with the YouTube section, the first question is, would you ever pursue YouTube as a career? Honestly, I don't think I'll ever do YouTube full-time just because it seems to be a very unstable career and like props to you if you are able to become a content creator as your job. But I think that is really cool, but ultimately there are way too many variables in having YouTube as your career and I am more interested in going to the science route for my career, so probably not. Number two is, do you find your channel stressful or fun? I think like 99% of the time, this channel is very fun for me. Like whenever I take a break for more than a week, it just gets so boring not being able to film and edit videos and just share my art with you guys. It's just become so much, such, such an important part of my life. But however, the 1% of time I am stressed is when I have deadlines and I'm also very busy that week with school or extracurriculars and I panic very easily. But overall, this channel is definitely more fun. Number three is what made you start a channel and was everyone supportive of it? I think I've always wanted to start a channel just because it seemed fun, like a hobby or something. Like back in 2017 when everyone was posting those slime videos or three marker challenges, I remember watching them and being like, yeah, this is what I want to do one day. And here we are now. And speaking of which, yes, my parents and all my friends were and still are very supportive of my channel. They're super sweet with their encouragement. The fourth question is, would you ever create a second channel? So I did actually create a shorts channel in like 2021 or something, but I kind of abandoned it. And actually what's funny is I was thinking of creating like a new Hershey Draws main channel and like abandoning this one because right after the How I Draw Bodies video took off, I did end up taking like a one or two month break or something on YouTube, which meant that although I did get a lot of subscribers, not all of them were active since I wasn't posting. So when I came back, I just accumulated a lot of supporters, which I am very thankful for, but they didn't always watch my videos, which is why my channel engagement went down a lot that year. So literally last week, I was considering creating a new channel for 2024, but I'm not giving up on this channel yet, and I have a couple plans to keep my channel active, and also I have started posting more shorts on this main channel as well, which I think will come out every Wednesday or Thursday. Speaking of that video, I got so many questions regarding it and how I planned it and how it blew up, so let's get started. If you don't know, I created a How I Draw Bodies tutorial-esque video two-ish years ago, which was never really meant to blow up by the way. I created it because I posted a poll on my community tab and you guys wanted to see it, and at the time I had like 1 or 2,000 subscribers, but I think in a day that video already hit 2k views, which was crazy at that time, and it just kept escalating past that, and now it's like getting a couple thousand every day. Also, what's funny is I filmed that video in less than 30 minutes, like to this day, that's the lowest amount of effort that I've ever put into a video, yet somehow everyone liked it. Anyways, I think that's the video that also brought a lot of more attention to my channel in general, but I hope this answers most of the questions regarding that. Next question is, how do you get brand deals and sponsorships? So as an art channel, there definitely aren't as many companies that we can collaborate with since our niche is a lot more specific than like lifestyle YouTubers, for example. However, I've learned companies do tend to look for views over subscribers. So if your channel is still very active and has a lot of engagement, and it, they're more likely to reach out to you. I also recommend making sure that you they have a way to reach out to you, whether it's through Instagram DMs or an email, which is what I have in the description of all my videos. Next question is how often do you get sponsorship requests? I'd say I do get them quite frequently, but like around half of them are either spam or they just don't relate to my channel at all. I remember one time, like one or two years ago, I did get a request to model yoga pants from a clothing company, which obviously doesn't relate to art in any way, shape, or form. So I do recommend that even if you do get a sponsorship, just don't feel pressured into accepting every single one of them. It's at the end of the day, it is your choice. Next question is have I met my fans in real life? So a lot of my friends' siblings actually do watch my videos, so technically, yes, I have met some fans. And there have been a couple of times at my school where someone I don't know, like, at all asked me if I'm Hershey Draws, but I have no clue how they found out, so I guess technically yes, but, like, they don't know how I look or anything, so no. How to grow as an art channel I think that growing as an art channel can be hard at first because within art itself, there are so many niches, like you could be a tutorial channel or a digital art channel, or you could just post traditional art or watercolor paintings. So finding your interest is probably the most important, and after that is posting consistently for those types of videos. I recommend posting like at least once a week or like three to four times a month because YouTube will push out your videos more if you post consistently. I noticed that for my channel, if I take a break for even more than a week, then it'll take another three uploads for YouTube to start recommending my videos again. Is it easy to post consistently? 
it definitely depends on the person because everyone's life is different and you could have a super busy schedule and need more time for things like school and each year i have to find a new way to sort of balance school and art because each year the workload gets more heavy i think last year i struggled a lot because it was the first time that i ever had to do that much work for like each class but this year i am more used to having it so i have been posting more consistently and i think what also helps is having a schedule so for me i film on mondays or tuesdays or wednesdays so if i'm super busy one of those days i'll still have the other two to film and then thursday i do rough cut edits and friday i do the voiceover edits and sunday i upload saturday is sort of like a break day for me if i'm like on head ahead of the schedule or if i'm rushing i'm able to catch up since i don't have school that day so i can film record and edit all in one day it's pretty easy, nice and the final question in this section is future goals so i do want to hit 50k by the end of this year that's like my main goal and maybe 60k if I, one of my videos blows up again which i doubt but that'd be really nice and i am also going to post five to eight shorts each month it'll just be like my regular doodles i do and i think it'd be cute to do like a mini series with my shorts and i already have a bunch of ideas for it so yeah that is it for the youtube session and now we're moving on to art first question is would you keep art as a hobby or make it into a career I feel like this question is harder for me to answer just because while I would love to do art in full time, it does go hand in hand with the other YouTube career question. It is definitely a hard career path because first of all, art school is terrifying based on what I've heard and it's also not the most stable choice for me and also a lot of people say that art school isn't really like necessary to begin with so right now i am leaning towards no and but however i will definitely still always do art as my hobby because i don't think i'm ever gonna quit that number two is what got you into drawing i've drawn ever since i was like able to hold a pencil so i don't think there's anything that specifically got me into it it's just something that i've been doing my whole life and i do think that what motivated me to improve my art was surprisingly enough youtube while I rarely receive any hate comments or criticism, posting my art online definitely lit a fire within me to want to make my art better and especially in 2020, there was like a community of small art YouTubers that sort of came together and supported one another which meant that we also learned off of one another which definitely wanted to make me want to improve my art. How do you deal with burnout and art block? I think for me, dealing with burnout is different just because I'm someone who posts all my work online. If I don't post my art online, I'll probably just like not draw for a couple of weeks and come back. And even if I still didn't feel like doing it, I just wait until I feel like drawing. However, because I don't want the algorithm to hate me on Instagram and YouTube, I do come up with some ways to tackle art block quickly. And I am working on a video for that, so stay tuned. But for now, I do recommend just drawing something that you're not comfortable with at all or outside of your comfort zone. So you get over the perfectionism mindset and you try to branch out, which definitely does help me a lot traditional art or digital art it really depends on my mood but i feel like i go through phases where i switch between the two so i don't really have a preference how do you create ocs honestly i make ocs super randomly like one day i'll just see a story prompt on pinterest or i'll be in a car ride and i'll think oh this would be so cool if this happened and i'd make a character to fulfill that one duty in my story fun fact that's literally how my oc ace was made and now he's like the most important character in the story so yeah let me know if you're interested in the step-by-step -step process on how to create and design an oc though what do you draw while listening or watching something in the background? Yes, I usually spend like 10 minutes trying to find something to watch on YouTube, but these days I don't really have any videos that like pique my interest that I can watch in the background or listen to like a podcast, so I tend to go onto my Spotify and listen to music. I have tried watching animes in the background, but I'm always looking up to see the subtitles because I don't speak Japanese, so it doesn't really end up that well. So yeah, I just listen to music in the background and also it just inspires me in general. How long did it take to become good at art? I think this is one of those controversial questions just because personally I don't think I'm that great at art or whatever like I have a lot of art that I am not proud of but also drawings that I really like so it is very subjective and I think that there isn't really like a time limit or anything to becoming good at art it's just something that you do every day and you see improvement the more you work and the more work that you put into it so it's just something that like you're growing every day or every time you practice and last question for this section is favorite art supply Right now, it's just colorful gel pens or like mechanical pencils, I guess. I haven't even used markers in so long, and another fun fact is this is my first time using alcohol markers in close to a month, so this video was very weird to film at first, just because I did feel a little bit uncomfortable going back into the routine of things, but I got used to it by the end. And now moving on to the final section, which is more personal questions, mainly like favorites and stuff. So yeah, the first question is, what is your favorite anime? So right now, it's definitely Jujutsu Kaisen, just because I finished binging season 2, and it's also been really popular as of late, but I also do read the manga for it, so I am all caught up, and it's also my overall favorite. But I also do love to watch Attack on Titan, Skip and Loafer, and Bungo Stray Dogs. What are your other hobbies and interests? So besides art, I did used to play the piano, I do dance, and I also like to read and write. 
what is your favorite genre of music? So I googled it because I actually didn't know what genre I listened to. I just have like a bunch of artists that I like. And according to Google, my favorite genre at the moment is soft pop or indie, R&B, and alt. My current favorite artists though are Chase Atlantic, Arctic Monkeys, Conan Gray, and I do listen to Taylor Swift from time to time, but I feel like that was more of me last year, and this year I'm like branching out a lot more. Next question is, do you play an instrument? So yeah, I do play a couple. I used to play flute for band a couple years ago, and the piano, and I also learned a recorder in like fourth grade, but I also really want to learn guitar. What is your favorite color? Guys, I have been obsessed with periwinkle. Like, it's really random, and I feel like a lot of people think that's a weird favorite color to have, but it, ever since I learned of its existence, it's like this blue-purple color. It's this in-between shade, and it's super pretty, and also the flower periwinkle is super pretty as well. And last question is, what is your favorite food? So I don't really have a favorite food, like, specifically. It depends on what I'm craving at the time, but I do like spicy food or sweet desserts, like cakes or s'mores. Anyways, that is it for the Q&A section, but I do want to talk a little bit about the Meet the Artist sort of spread that I'm doing in the background. I am using my sketchbook and my alcohol markers, and the likes and dislikes section I thought I'd just explain really quickly. So the likes are drawing, reading, anime and manga, coffee, soft pop music, and spicy food. While for dislikes, I have spiders, hot weather, sweet potatoes, which is a new thing that I learned that I'm not a fan of, algebra, and waking up early, especially if it's for school. On the side, I also have a bunch of the items that I'm like most likely to carry around or use a lot, and also some app icons, as well as this little close-up bust of me, and this full body on the side, which is actually an outfit that I wear a lot. And at the very bottom, I do have some other information like me, like I'm an Aries, I'm an ENFP, I go by she, her, and I'm 5'2". Anyways, that is pretty much it for today's video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Once again, thank you so much to everyone who asked me a question, and I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of them, but if I didn't get to yours, then make sure to comment it down below in the comment section, and I will try answering all of them. As always, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Have a great day, happy new years, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!